Good afternoon. Um, this is Pastor Edward Santongo. You're welcome for our Bible study um, today. Uh, continuing, uh, today is a little bit, uh, the weather is a little bit um, looking gloomy outside. So I hope the picture quality is good. Uh, but you're welcome for to our Bible study today. And again, my name is Pastor Edward Santongo. We're going to be sharing uh, today... Um, Yesterday, I, I, I um, uh, touched on um, First John chapter four. We discussed it, but I, I feel like I need to do it again um, more slowly so that uh, people understand uh, the scripture uh, and what the Spirit of the Lord uh, has revealed in this scripture. Praise God! And before I do it, I'm going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. I thank you for uh, your provision, your protection, your healing power for each and every one of us. We come before your mercy seat and ask for the forgiveness of our sins. Anything we say, done, or thought that does not glorify your name, we pray that you forgive each and every one of us, purify us, cleanse each and every one of us with the precious blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, and everybody say, Amen. Now may God um, uh, write that word, that imperishable seed, the living word of God in our hearts by the power of the Spirit of the living God. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. Uh, take church. Um, and we are going to start our scripture now first John chapter 4 I want to go slowly um, as we study this scripture um, so that everybody understands what the Spirit of the Lord is revealing in the scripture praise God and the enemy has been fighting because uh, there's so many people that have interpreted um, spirits that would have been spirits of men as demonic spirits <laughs> so so you're going to see the scripture it is very tricky to interpret you have to have the eyes of the spirit of god in order to understand what the spirit of god is uh, revealing in the scripture praise god so first john chapter 4 if you have your bibles with you uh please um open first john chapter 4 uh, verse 1 and i'm going to start uh, by reading uh, from uh, verse 1 the word of god declares here Beloved, do not believe every spirit. And, and I'm going to um, uh, quote that the spirit here is a small spirit with a small s. So it says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits. Again, it's using small spirits. So test the spirits, whether they are of God. In other words, test those spirits, whether they are of God or because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So in other words, test the spirits, whether they are of God or of Satan, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. Now, I want to begin by um, um, stating that we are spiritual beings in a human body. We, you and I, were created by God as spiritual beings. He created this body for us as an encasement for us to do the work that he has called us to do here. But the real us, really, is spirit, because God himself is spirit. He created us in his own image. Um, in the very beginning, when he created Adam and Eve, he created them both male and female in his own image. Praise God. As a matter of fact, let's start from Genesis chapter, um, chapter 1, verse 26, I believe. Uh, verse 26. So if you have your Bibles with me and hold first John chapter 4, just put a a paper or some kind of uh, um, um, uh, notation to remember where we are. It's First John chapter 4. Uh, but we are going to Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. How did human beings, how, how were they created in the very beginning? And, and who are we in this world? Are we just a physical body or are we spiritual beings? We are spiritual beings in a human body. And this is the scripture. Genesis uh, chapter 1 verse 26. This is what it says. Um, then, then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, let them have a dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over, uh, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And so you understand that if God is spirit, because we know that God is spirit, uh, he's invisible, he created man in his own image that would mean that you and i are in his image everybody that is created was created in his image in god's image uh, of course that image is distorted by the devil 
You know, the image is distorted by, distorted by the devil when he attacks, um, um, uh, even as he attacked Adam and Eve, when, when the story of Adam and Eve, you know, uh, he distorted that image, the, the, the image of the creation of uh, a human being in God's image. Now listen to verse 27, because verse 27 is where you get the answer. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, Again, he, repeat, he repeats it. He created him male and female. He created them. So in other words, he created he first created uh, Adam and then male and female, he created them. That's what he says. So in other words, Adam first and then Eve later, but both of them in the image of God, which means that before they were even uh, in this physical body, praise God, before they were formed in the physical they, they, they were... Uh, uh, um, uh, breathe into this physical body. They were formed in the image of God, and that image of God is spirit. Praise God. Now, you're going to ask, why is it then that um, uh, there's a second uh, creation account? The second creation account is in uh, Genesis 2, verse 7. Let us go to Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, and you're going to understand uh, what God did here. Praise God. So, he first created man in his own image. In other words, he created a spiritual being a spiritual being that is exactly like, not exactly like him, but in his own image, praise God, because we can be God, God is God, but he created us in his image, praise God. So I'm hoping that you understand that what that means. That means that we are spirit, praise God. In other words, we are spiritual beings. Now in Genesis chapter two, verse seven, listen to what God did. He's, he creates man, praise God, Adam first, from the dust, in other words, he creates the body, this body, this body through which the spiritual being that he created first would operate. So I'm hoping that you're going to understand this. So Genesis 2 verse 7, and I pray that the Holy Spirit reveals this to you. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, listen to what happened when God created uh, Adam from uh, the dust. It says, and the Lord God formed man of the dust. He formed man. Now, this is the, the human form the human form, in other words. So we have a spiritual form, and then there's the human form. So we are human beings, spiritual beings in a human body. Praise God. And I'm hoping you're getting that. Praise God. So listen to what he does. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils. Breathed into what? His nostrils. And this is Adam. The breath of life. And man became a living being. Now that is outstanding. That is quite outstanding because right there you get your answer that we are spiritual beings in a human body. What God breathed into Adam was the original creation. The spiritual being that he created in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 27 as we saw. Praise God. And that spiritual being Adam was put into the physical encasing, this body, praise God, and thus man became a living being, praise the son of a living God. And that is why when we become born again, brother, sister, and we know the story of how um, Eve was created from the rib of Adam, Eve was created. But again, because Eve was created way before, praise God, Way before, with, uh, with, with um, uh, Adam and Eve, as spiritual beings, Eve did not become a living being until, again, God, after creating uh, the, 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 uh, uh, Eve from the rib, one of the ribs of, uh, of Adam, praise God, in human form, and we talk about the physical encasing, praise God, until he breathed that Eve that he had created earlier, did Eve become a living being. Praise God. And I, I hope you're getting the message. Praise the son of the living God. Praise God. So those are that's the reason why I used to wonder, why God? Why do we have two creation accounts? It's a little confusing. We have one in which God creates uh, man in his own image. And then we have this physical form where man is created from dust. And therein lies the answer. That's why when we die, when we die, this body is from dust. What do they say? From dust to dust. So this body is buried. The physical form of the human being, the natural form, goes to back to the ground where it came from. Now, of course, 
and the, 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 the coming of Christ, that body will be risen up and we'll all be spiritual beings. Spiritual beings, in other words, the, 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 this physical body, like Jesus Christ's body, which never saw decay and, and was transformed, again, not flesh and blood, but transformed in our uh, um, uh, 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 glorified bodies that are supposed to partake of the kingdom of heaven, so shall the bodies that are buried at the return of Jesus Christ for those that believe in Jesus Christ, be glorified. Praise God. And those that don't believe in Jesus Christ, unfortunately, there is eternal death. Praise God. The gift of righteousness, rather the, 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 the wages of sin is, is, is death. The gift of righteousness is eternal life through Christ. Romans 3, verse, um, Romans 6, verse 23. Praise God. Now, I am hoping that you've understood what God did. So, when we become born again, born again, and I'm, and I'm going to take you to John chapter 3. Hold first John chapter 4 because there's a reason why I'm taking you here. In John chapter 3, verse 3, this is what Jesus Christ explained to Nicodemus who was wondering why uh, or what it means to be born again. What does it mean to be born again? Because Jesus Christ was explaining to them that one must be born again in order to partake of the kingdom of heaven. And listen to these words. Praise God. In John chapter 3, verse 3. Praise God. And they are very powerful. So, um, actually, let me start from uh, 1. There was a man, John 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees. And so, it was a man who uh, was a man of the law. The Pharisees were men of the law. And they did not understand the purpose for which Christ had come here on earth. And, and Christ now begins to explain to this man of the law, who, uh, by all accounts, was knowledgeable in, in, in God's, uh, law and, and uh, Moses' law, which was given by God, but yet he did not understand that he was speaking to the Son of God who had been prophesied in the Old Testament and that he had come for a purpose, that they would be all saved and born again. The Messiah, the, 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 the Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Yeshua, Hamashiach, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the very last. And so, Jesus Christ begins to explain to Nicodemus and says, this man came to Jesus. The word of God says in, in verse 2, this man came to Jesus. This is Nicodemus coming to Jesus Christ. Praise God. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. So this man recognized that Jesus Christ was from our Father in heaven. Praise God. In that because of the signs, the miracles, signs and wonders that God was using uh, Jesus Christ to do, uh, the lepers being healed, the blind eyes seeing, the, the, the lame walking, the, 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 um, the deaf hearing, the, the, the mute speaking. I'm talking about so many miracles. People that were dead are rising from the dead. A like case in example is... Um, um, uh, Lazarus, Lazarus was raised from the dead. So many miracles, so many miracles. And so he understood that this man, Jesus Christ, the son of a living God, was from God. And I'm maybe speaking to somebody that may know that. Yes, Jesus Christ died on the cross and he is from God. And because of the account of all the miracles, signs and wonders, yes, you know that Jesus Christ is the son of a living God. Yet in your heart, you have not been delivered from the bondage of slavery to sin, from the bondage of slavery to the enemy. You have not accepted him as your personal Lord and Savior to come and take, take residence in your heart. Praise God. And that's what Jesus Christ here is going to be explaining. Praise God. In John 3, 3, listen to what he explains. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Listen to what he says in verse 4. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And that is Nicodemus asking. And he was confused, of course. He did not understand that uh, Jesus Christ was speaking of a spiritual birth, a spiritual rebirth. Praise God. A spiritual reborn, born again. Born again, meaning that they were born, we were born even before we were even formed in our mother's wombs. Praise God. But because of the sin in the world in which we are introduced, our spirits are corrupted. And so you must be born again in order for your spirit to be connected to Jesus Christ, the Son of a living God. And that is what precisely 
Jesus Christ was explaining to this man, Nicodemus, a man of the law, a man of tradition, a same rebirth that Saul of Tarsus, who was also a Pharisee, who was persecuting the church, had to go through when he met Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus and became born again. And today, two thirds of the New Testament scriptures, which are spirit filled, Holy Spirit inspired, we read and learn of the things of God. Praise God. And so Nicodemus says to him, how can a man be born when he is uh, be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, and the spirit being with capital S, which is the spirit of a living God. In other words, you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and you are born again. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, right there and then, you're born of the Spirit of God. The gift of the Holy Spirit is something that is given to you automatically because of who you believe in, because of having accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Praise God. Say, unless, most assuredly I say to you, this is just saying, Unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. That which is born of the spirit, capital S, is spirit. Praise God. So in other words, he's using capital S, the capital spirit, for the spirit, praise God, praise God, spirit of the man, who, any human being, because we're spiritual beings, as we, we already explained, in a human body, but that spirit has been corrupted, so it has to be born again, connected to Jesus Christ through the spirit of God, praise God, in order to be born again, praise God. And I took you there for a specific purpose. Now, let us go to John 7, verse 38. And there is a reason why I'm taking you to these scriptures, praise God. John 7, verse uh, 38 to 39. So that we understand where the Spirit of God comes from and what is the purpose of the Spirit of a living God and who receives the Spirit of a living God, who is born of the Spirit of a living God. John 7 verse 38, again, Jesus Christ explaining, praise God, explaining to uh, of the promise of the Holy Spirit, praise God, to his disciples. He says in John 7 verse 37, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, if anyone thirsts, Praise God. Let him thirst. Uh, let him come to me and drink. Praise God. Verse 38, he says. Listen to what he says. If anyone thirsts, verse 37, let him come to me and drink. So if you thirst, if you hunger and thirst for the things of God, if you hunger to be reborn, if you hunger to be born again, he says, come to me. Praise God. And drink. Because even as he explained, in fact, I didn't share the story of the, the good, the Samaritan woman who, um, uh, who um, in John 4, I think John 4 verse 30 something, praise God. No, John 4 verse um, um, 10 to 13, around there, praise God. 1 to 13, if you read this whole scripture of how the Samaritan woman, um, who was, by all accounts, not supposed to mix with the Jews, she was a Samaritan, comes and asks uh, Jesus, uh, uh, comes and uh, meets Jesus Christ in a well when she's come to fetch water and Jesus Christ asks her to give him a drink of water and then this woman tells him who are you to ask me for a drink of water Jews and Samaritans don't mix and Jesus Christ explains to her if she knew who was asking her for a drink of water she would have known that he would he was able to give her water that would quench her thirst forever thirst forever praise God Praise, praise the Son of the Living God. As a matter of fact, let's read there first before we, we finish up this. John 4, verse 30. I'm just referencing this scripture so that you understand how you become born again, who we are in Christ, uh, what are, are we spiritual beings and human body, and what does it mean to be born again? Praise God. How we walk in this world. Praise God. So listen to this in verse 7. Let's start from uh, John 4, verse uh, uh, 7. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said to her, verse 10, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Praise God. He would have given you living water. Jesus Christ explained to this Samaritan woman that if you knew, was asking you for a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you 
living water. Then the woman said to him, verse 11, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? She did not understand that he was talking of a, a spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. Praise God. Spirit being the living water. Praise God. And we're going to read in John 7, 38. There's a reason why I took you here so that you understand where uh, that, that comes from. Praise God. But we know that Jesus Christ is a source of living water. And verse 12 says, Are you greater than our father Jacob who gave us the well and drank from it himself as well as his sons and his livestock? And she's talking natural, natural well. And Jesus Christ is explaining to her in verse 13 uh, that whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. Whoever drinks of this natural water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. The water being the spirit of the, of the living God as we're going to learn. Praise God. Coming from the rock of our salvation, which is Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. But the water that I shall give him, and it's him and, and, and her, praise God, will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. In other words, when you become born again, in you, what he gives you becomes a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Whoever believes in him, praise God, receives that living water that gives us eternal life. And that eternal life being of the spirit of the living God. That's what it means to become born again. And that's what he meant when he was speaking to Nicodemus, uh, what it means to become born again. But listen to John 7, verse 37 to 30, uh, 39, actually, which I had taken you to. And there's a reason why I'm taking you this scripture, so that when we go to First John chapter 4, you'll understand what the explanation is all about. Praise God. On the last day, John 7, verse 37, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Praise God. The same thing that he told the Samaritan woman, he's telling to each and every one of us. Praise God. Even today. He who believes in me, verse 38, he who believes in me. And this is Jesus Christ saying, as the scripture has said, out of his herd will flow rivers of living water. Praise the son of the living God. Praise the son of a living God. So he says, praise God. That he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his hurt or out of her hurt, will flow rivers of living water. Now, why are the rivers of living water? And we know that the, 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 the source is Jesus Christ because he says, whoever believes in him, out of her hurt, out of his hurt or her hurt, will flow rivers of living water. He explains in 39. But this he spoke concerning the spirit, and this is capital S. The spirit. So which means that when you are born again, you receive that spirit of the living God. You and I that become born again, and if you are not yet born again, please accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. You receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and it is that spirit that helps you in this world that we live in. Praise God. Overcome temptations, overcome trials and tribulations, overcome the enemy, trample upon serpents and scorpions, lay hands on the sick and they are healed. In the name of Jesus. So he says, 39, but this is spoke concerning the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. And we know that when he died on the cross and rose from the dead by the spirit of a living God, Jesus Christ was glorified by the Father in heaven. Praise the son of the living God. And now I take you back to First John chapter 4. First John chapter 4, and this is where um, 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 John, um, it's believed it might have been John the Revelator or a different John, but inspired by the Spirit of a living God, because the things of God, you can tell what is of God, it all adds up together. Praise God. The scriptures that I was quoting were all adding up together. Praise God. So he says in First John chapter 4, because the scriptures are Holy, are Holy Spirit inspired. Praise God. There were men and women that were led by the spirit of a living God. And some of them had a, an account, a real life account with Jesus Christ, the son of a living God. Most of the disciples, all the disciples that, are, that have written these uh, scriptures that we read, the gospels, praise God. All those that uh, got information from those disciples are people that experienced, praise God, the real life relationship with Jesus Christ in the realm of the spirit and in the physical, praise God. They saw the miracles that he did, and they heard the scriptures, and, 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 and 
so Jesus Christ performing miracles. They, they listen to his teachings. Praise God. First John chapter 4. And this is for our own edification as the body of Christ. All scriptures is Holy Spirit inspired, but you must look at the scriptures in the realm of the spirit, under the leadership of the spirit of the living God in order for us to be able to understand what the spirit of God is speaking to each and every one of us. As a matter of fact, that's why Jesus Christ said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'll leave you a comforter, a counselor. Who is a counselor? A counselor is someone who teaches you. A comforter is someone who comforts you in the realm of the spirit. Praise God. As a matter of fact, he said, the spirit of truth, he called him the spirit of truth, will show you all things that I have already told you. Praise God. He will speak of things that are to come and those that I've already told you. Praise God. And that is the purpose of the spirit of the living God. To open, enlighten our hearts, open our eyes, and, and, and be the light. Praise God. The light in our hearts. Praise God. That points to Jesus Christ and no other. No, he would not be pointing to his authority, but to Christ himself. Praise God. He would not be speaking of himself, but to Christ himself. Speaking of Christ. And this is where First John chapter 4 becomes very important. And, 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 and he says... First John chapter 4, going back to First John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. And this is small spirit. But test the spirits. Again, small spirit. Spirits, small spirits. Praise God. Whether they are of God, listen to their language. Whether they are of God. So in other words, there are some spirits that are of God. And there are some spirits that are not of God. So he's not, not talking about demonic spirits. He's talking about your spirit, my spirit. And testing those spirits, whether they are of God or of Satan. Praise God. It is possible for someone's spirit to be stolen by the devil, by the Antichrist, by the devil who send, who's going to send the Antichrist. Praise God. And, and, and as a matter of fact, somewhere in the scripture, uh, we, as we read on, you're going to read um, and understand that there are already many Antichrists in the world. Antichrist meaning someone who is against Christ. A person. A human being, a spiritual being in a human body against Christ. But there are those that are for Christ, those that have chosen to believe Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior and have now attained the power of the Spirit of the living God, have attained the gift of the Holy Spirit, which we just read about. Praise God. And he is explaining here, beloved, do not believe every spirit. So he's talking about a spirit of a human being, but test the spirits. And those spirits are spirits of human beings, not demonic spirits. Whether they are of God, in other words, there are spirits that are, that are of God and spirits that are not of God. Not of God. So there can't be many spirits, obviously, we know, <laughs> praise God, except one spirit that is the spirit of God. There can't be many spirits that are of God, except there are spirits that are under the spirit of God. I'm hoping that you get the revelation, praise God. So in other words, he's talking about the spirits of human beings because we are spiritual beings in a human body and how we live here on earth will depend on whether we accept Jesus Christ as uh, on, on who, whether we accept Jesus Christ uh, as our personal Lord and Savior or we reject him as our personal Lord and Savior yeah those that have rejected Christ Hosea 4 6 says my people are dying because of lack of knowledge some have rejected the truth and some of them were priests some of them where um, uh, like the Pharisee Nicodemus was asking uh, who later I understand uh, came to Christ but others so many Pharisees even today so many religious men and women that choose to have a form of godliness but denying the power of God and so he is explaining here beloved do not believe every spirit but test the spirits whether they are of God because many false prophets have gone out into the world and that is so powerful. So the false prophets then are those that have a spirit that has been corrupted. A spirit, their own spirits from inside because we are spiritual beings and human body that has been lied to by the devil. And now they go out and preach false doctrines. In verse 2 he says, and this is where you get the answer. By this you know the spirit of God. Now he's using a capital spirit. Praise God. That is how we know that it is the Holy Spirit. That, and then he adds on, every spirit, and this is small spirit, that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Now therein lies the answer. Every spirit, and he's talking about the small spirit, that confesses, so in other words, it has to be a person, a spirit of a person that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh 
That is the spirit that is of God. Your spirit, my spirit, if it confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, then that is a spirit that is of God. Not in talking about demonic spirits. Praise God. And yes, there are demonic spirits, demonic spirits from the devil that he sends, that corrupts men's minds and, and uses men's spirits to, to be, uh, to error, to, to, to say things that are not of God. False doctrines. There is that realm of the spirit, yes. And, and, and But here in this scripture, he's specifically talking about your spirit, my spirit, and whether it recognizes or confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, that spirit is of God. Listen to verse 3. Again, he's using a small spirit. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. So in other words, there are those spirits, disobedient spirits, spirits that will say no to God. There are those spirits of human beings. Not, I'm not talking about demonic spirits, but spirits of men. Because we are spirit of beings in a human body. you got to remember that. Praise God. There are those spirits that will be disobedient obedient, and rebellious and say no to God. Say no and, 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 and claim that Jesus Christ did not die in the flesh. And say no, that Jesus Christ is not the son of a living God. And those spirits are those spirits that have been lost. Those spirits are those spirits that are in prison. Those spirits are those spirits that reject Christ as the son of a living God. He said, and every spirit that has not confessed that Jesus Christ has not come in the flesh is not of God. That's why we must all confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God in order to become born again and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit as we just read. Praise God. It says, continuing, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. It said, every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is, again, he's using a small spirit, and this is the spirit of of the antichrist which you have heard was coming now there is a spirit it will be a human being a spirit of the antichrist that is coming now that spirit will be a corrupted spirit a corrupted spirit of a man that will uh, be corrupted by the beast the beast the beast being the, the, the from the devil the beast being a spirit, a demonic spirit that will corrupt this man's spirit it will be a human being with the number triple six and that spirit will be corrupted, and it is the spirit of the Antichrist that he is talking about. So, and this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming. So we have heard the spirit is coming. It is not yet revealed, and we're going to read scripture to that effect. But he is coming. And now he adds, and is now already in the world. Now, listen to this. There are so many spirits, Antichrist. There's so many Antichrist, people that are against Christ. That have the same spirit that will be in this, uh, the, the, the spirit that rejects Christ, that will be in this Antichrist, okay? It will be a spirit of a man, yeah, but corrupted. So he's saying here that it is already in the world. There are already people, human beings, whose spirits have already been corrupted. This is already in the world. This rebelliousness, the spirit of rebelliousness in men, in the spirits of men, is already in the world. Praise the Son of the living God. So I'm hoping that you're understanding the scripture. Now, hold that for a minute. Let me take you to first, um, um, first John chapter 2, verse 18. First John chapter 2, verse 18. And my heading here says deceptions of the last hour. And so we talk about deceptions, and deceptions being deceptions to the spirits of men and women. And those deceptions leading their spirits to error, leading their spirits to follow the, the doctrines of the devil, the doctrines of deceiving spirits. So, so separate the spirits of evil, which corrupt the spirits of man, and then makes those spirits of man antichrist. Praise God. So I'm hoping that you're understanding the, te the teaching here. So there's the spirit of the antichrist, which is a spirit in itself, a spirit of rebelliousness, a spirit of disobedience that corrupts the spirits of men and women. That we are otherwise created the image of God and then leads them to error and become antichrist themselves. In other words, they reject Christ. They oppose everything that Christ stands for. And this is the explanation of First John chapter four. And verse eighteen, First John chapter two, verse eighteen brings it out very clearly. This is what it says. Praise God. It says, little children, as a matter of fact, let me start from 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. And he's speaking to you and I. 
Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So in other words, if you love material things, if you love the gold of this world, if you love uh, uh, sexual immorality, if you love all the evil and perversion in the world, the love of the Father is not in If you hate another, you love the things of the world. If you, if you uh, want to kill another, the love of the Father is not in you. If you prefer to curse and, and to gossip and, and to do all evil, prostitute your body and, 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 and practice homosexuality and, and religiosity and in all manner of worship of false gods, the love of the Father is not in him, he says. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, exactly what I was saying, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Listen to that, pride. If there is any pride in your heart, the pride of life, he says, and so many things that can lead to pride in life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Listen to the scripture, as it says here in 17. And the world is passing away. Heaven and earth, the word of God declares, will pass away. But the words of Jesus Christ will never pass away. He says in 17, and the world is passing away. And the last of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So the world will pass away, and everybody, human beings will pass away. This flesh is going to pass away. But if you abide in Christ, if you abide in the will of God, if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have eternal life. And that's why in John 3, 16, the word of God declares, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Praise God. In verse 18, listen to what he says, and this is where I was getting at. Little children, and he calls us little children, those that believe in Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, are little children. Because you know what? In John 1 verse 12, the word of God declares, whoever believes in him, praise God, he gave the right to become children of God in the kingdom of God. In Romans 8 14, Paul speaking to the church in Rome, of the Romans, praise God, speaking to them of walking in the spirit versus the flesh, praise God. The need to walk under the leadership of the Spirit of the Living God said in Romans 8, 14. For those that are led by the Spirit of the Living God, capital S, those are the children of God. Praise God. And so he says here, going back to 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, which is where I wanted to reference before we go back to 1 John chapter 4. He says, little children, it is the last hour, and we are living in the last days, brother, sister. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Again, he's referencing the Antichrist. The Antichrist will be a person, will be a human being, a rebellious person, a lawless person, a son of petition, a human being, but with this rebellious spirit that comes from Satan himself. And so that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, listen to this. Little children, it is the last hour, and you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists, many Antichrists have come. So he's speaking of human beings, Antichrists who oppose Jesus Christ as the Son of a living God, who do not confess that Jesus Christ died in the flesh, as we just learned in First John chapter 4, by which we know that it is the last, uh, the last hour. In verse 19, he says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. So you know that then that the Antichrist that he's talking about are human beings. But they are human beings that have this rebellious spirit, whose spirits, own spirits have been corrupted by rebelliousness and disobedience, even as Adam and Eve was corrupted by Satan, that old serpent called the devil, the dragon, that led them to rebel against God and be disobedient against God, be disobedient to God. So he's saying, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us. This Antichrist went out from us. You know, there were human beings that went out from those that believed. They rejected Christ. And even today, there are those that have rejected Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior. So he says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, in other words, it's talking about human beings. They would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. Praise God. And those are the false prophets, the false apostles that John is talking about here. But he says in verse 20, but you have an anointing from the Holy One, and that is the Holy Spirit of God. And you know all things. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and that no lie is of the truth. 
Now let us go back to First John chapter 4 where we are in verse 4. In this verse 4, confirming again that you that believe in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and I'm believing that everybody that is watching here is going to act, if they don't believe in Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, is going to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior because he is the only way, the truth, and the life, as it is written in John 14, verse 6. And that unless, as we just read, one is born of water and spirit by accepting him as their personal Lord and Savior, they cannot see the kingdom of God. And so you must then be born again in order to receive him and receive the gift of the spirit of the living God. Praise God. So verse 4, he says in First John chapter 4, verse 4, and this is marvelous. This is really very, uh, um, uh, it is scripture that I put on my heart and, and scripture that really uh, encourages me, strengthens me. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Scripture is written for our encouragement, to encourage us, to strengthen us, to help us grow in our faith. Praise God. And we all have the different walks of faith. Some have little faith, some have great faith, but we grow. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Praise the son of a living God. Praise God. And so it is something that is supernatural. It is something that is spiritual. It's not something that you work out, but it is something that you receive as a gift. It is one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, just like love, just like patience, and the gifts of the Holy Spirit are in Galatians 5, 22 to 23, if you uh, want to uh, find out what those are. Listen to what it says in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, that you are of God. You have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Little children. He calls you little children. You and I are little children and have, have, have overcome them, have overcome those that are not of God. So some people may be used by the by, by the, the, the devil, that also happened for the devil, to come against you. And that's where they were, they, when there was a lot of persecution in the times of uh, the disciples, the persecution in the times of Paul or Peter, and so many people that were used by the devil came against them. But they overcame the devil who was behind them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives to the death. Now, we do not hate fellow brother we do not hate human beings for the battle we fight is not carnal in nature the word of god says in second chronicles or rather second corinthians 10 verse 45 for our weapons are not carnal in nature they are not carnal they are not fleshly but they are mighty for pulling down strongholds casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts notice that he says that exalts itself above God. So in other words, anything in our hearts that exalts itself above God, we must cast down. Praise God. Cast it out. Praise God. Weapons that we fight with are not carnal in nature, but they are mighty for pulling down strongholds and casting down every imagination in, in the hurt and every high thing that exalts itself above God, bringing every thought captive and obedient to Christ. And when all obedience has been fulfilled, punishing every disobedience praise god so we must be obedient and that obedience is through accepting jesus christ as your personal lord and savior you and i praise god so listen to what he says you are of god little children and i've overcome them he's talking about human beings again he's not talking about demons so he's talking about evil spirits even though those people have spirits that have been corrupted by demons and in false doctrines from the devil praise god and he says because he who is in you and this is a capital h he you who has accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you and I, he who is in us, is greater than he, small he, and now he's talking about the devil, the devil himself, the little God of this world. Elsewhere in the scripture it says the devil is a small God of this world, and, and he becomes a small God of this world for those that believe in him, and for those that uh, have not received the gift of the Holy Spirit and do not recognize that Jesus Christ is more powerful than, than that little he, that small God, and that's why people worship false gods, worship Hinduism and Buddhism, worship uh, go on with sin and worship uh, the, even themselves, worship money, worship mammon instead of God, worship uh, of things instead of uh, objects that are created by God, even trees. Some people worship trees instead of the creator himself, and that is God, our Heavenly Father. He's saying, therefore, you are of, they say, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he, God, Jesus Christ, who is in you. Because Jesus Christ said, if we accept him as our personal Lord and Savior, our Heavenly Father, the Son, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and the Holy Spirit, will come and dwell with us. Praise God. It says, he who is in you is greater than the small he who is in the world. And that is the devil that all serpent called the devil. Verse 5, listen to what it says. 
They are of the world. And he's talking about human beings. Notice how the scripture now is, is, is not really changing, but it's is really telling you. They are of the world. Who? The spirits that have been corrupted by that old serpent called the devil. The small he who is in the world. That, that Not the Antichrist himself, but really the spirit behind the Antichrist. And that is the devil himself. Who is a spirit, a demonic spirit, a fallen angel, like all the other fallen angels that fell from heaven, and Jesus Christ said that he saw that it set and fall like lightning, lightning from heaven. And he gave us the power and authority to trap upon serpents and scorpions. And so you must recognize that you have the power and authority, but that power is operational through Christ and by the gift of the Holy Spirit that he gives us. Praise God. Listen to what he says. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. So he's talking about human beings, spiritual beings and human body who have been corrupted by the devil, by that old serpent called the devil, and now speak as the world because they serve the little God of this world. But you, brother, sister, that have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, friend, family, whoever is listening, you have the spirit of a living God. And it is the spirit of a living God that enables you to overcome the evil desires, the fleshly sin in this world. Praise the Son of a living God. And that is the scripture. That is the truth. That is the revelation from the Spirit of the living God in this scripture. Paul says in Romans 12, verse 1 to 2, that we are to offer our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord. Praise the Son of the living God. We are not supposed to be conformed to this world. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, which comes through the word of God, so that you may know that which is the perfect will of God. Hallelujah, somebody. But here are the false prophets, he's saying, that they are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world. In other words, it is those spirits that do not confess that Jesus Christ died in the flesh that are being deceived by the God of his world, the devil that also happened called the devil, that speak of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. But we who are born again, whoever is born again, and born of the spirit of a living God, praise the son of a living God, and baptized in water, immersed in the spirit, immersed in the water and baptized by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Some people who don't believe in speaking in tongues, I sometimes speak in the tongues and led by the spirit of a living God. I let it be. Praise God. But I'm here to tell you, don't be ashamed, brother, sister. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and that comes through Jesus Christ, the son of a living God. Praise God. And what I wanted to earn, that even though we who are born again are in this world, yes, we are in this world, but we do not walk according to this world. Our weapons are not counter in nature. We do not walk as if we are in the world, but we walk according to the spirit of a living God, according to the spirit of a living God. Even though we are in this world, we are not of this world. We are joined hairs with Christ, seated in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers. Praise the Son of a living God. Having been given the keys that open the kingdom of heaven, that whatsoever thing we bind here on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever thing we loosen here on earth is loosened in heaven by the power of the Spirit of a living God. Not by our own might, not by our own power, but by the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah, somebody. I thank you, Jesus, for your loving kindness and for that revelation. And so this is what makes you a true Christian. A true Christian is that one that does not walk according to the world, not according to, to the perversion and the evil desires of this world, not according to what everybody says about, oh, homosexuality is okay, I was born that way. No, that is not the truth. Not according to religiosity, not according to go godliness, a form of godliness that denies the power of God, that denies the spirit of a living God, that denies that Jesus Christ died in the flesh. Listen to what he says in verse 6. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit, and this is small spirit, of truth. So it means there's a small spirit that is of truth, and he's not using a capital S. So you would know then that the spirit of truth is that spirit that has been transformed and renewed by the word of God, that spirit that has been saved by Jesus Christ, the Son of living God, and that spirit that is connected to the spirit, capital S, spirit of truth. And it is that spirit of a human being who recognizes that Jesus Christ is the Son of a living God that died in the flesh, died on the cross, rose from the dead when he was buried on the third day, rose from the dead by the spirit of a living God. He sit at the right hand of God. will come back to judge the living and the dead. Hallelujah, somebody. 
city. So he says, by this we know the spirit, small spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And that is how, brother, sister, you test the spirits. So in other words, now you know that the spirits that we are testing are not the demonic spirits. Because a lot of people, uh, uh, um, uh, they, they interpret this to mean that you're testing that, that whether it's a, uh, this is a spirit of the devil. In other words, they, they look at the spirit in the realm of the spirit of, of, the, of the spirits of evil. Spirits of evil, in other words, demonic spirits. But the spirits that he was talking about here was taking, testing the spirits of men. Whether they are spirits of truth, in other words, have they been connected to Jesus Christ, or are they spirits of error? He says it here. Spirits of error, in other words, they have erred, and now they are following the devil himself. False doctrines. Paul, in the book of First Timothy, chapter 3, talked about these deceiving spirits, and the deceiving spirits that deceive the spirits of men and leads them to error. Let's open our Bibles in First Timothy chapter 3 so that we understand what the Spirit of the Lord is talking to us in these very last days. And we are in the very last days, brother, sister. But we need to be very vigilant, very attentive with our spiritual antennas connected to the Holy Spirit to understand that which is the, uh, um, the, the, um, the perfect will of God. Praise God. Okay, it's First Timothy chapter 4. Open First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. This is what the Spirit of God says. Now the Spirit, and this is capital Spirit, expressly says that in the latter times, in the last days, same thing, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits. Now deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Now, deceiving spirits here, we're talking about spirits that have been corrupted, Deceiving spirits that have been corrupted and having doctrines of demons. Now he says, Lord is here saying in two, speaking lies in hypocrisy. In other words, it is human beings that are speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience. A devil doesn't have a conscience, but it is a human being. So you understand that the spirits that he's talking about are spirits of human being, but have been corrupted by the devil that also happened called the devil himself. So it says, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. So it is a human being whose conscience has been seared with a hot iron. That hot iron and, and the, the, the deception of the demons, doctrines of demons are, that are from the devil. Spirits that have erred as a result of being connected to the devil himself. Jesus Christ said that those that are the father of lies, they are deceived. But if you have the father of truth, then you have the spirit of truth. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16, Praise God. That those that believe, we are the temples of the spirit of the living God. Capital S. Our spirits are connected to the spirit of God. It's verse John, verse John chapter 4 is explaining precisely that. That if you have the spirit of God in you, then your spirit is the spirit of truth. But if you don't have the spirit of God in you, you're connected to the father of lies, which is the devil. That all serpent called the devil and your spirit errors. It is listening to the false doctrines of demons. Deceiving spirits are those spirits that are of the false prophets and false apostles. Their own spirits. Spirits that, he says here, speak lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. So he's talking about human beings. He's talking about Pharisees. He's talking about men who, who, who have a form of godliness but deny the power of God, who are not connected to the spirit of a living God, that have been corrupted by the devil himself. So he says in verse 3, Forbidding to marry. So again, he's talking about human beings, not demons, or not uh, 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 evil spirits, but he's talking about spirits of human beings that have been corrupted by, corrupted by uh, doctrines of demons. Praise God. Says, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods. So it's human beings, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. So they are those who believe and know the truth. Again, human beings. And those that believe and know the truth are those human beings with spirits, spiritual beings in human bodies that are connected to the spirit of the living God. Verse 4 says, For every creature, is, uh, every, every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. And he was speaking of uh, the false prophets of the time who had been uh, teaching uh, these, these lying doctrines of demons and, and uh, 
teaching false lies and, and, and preaching things that are not of God, preaching uh, themselves being corrupted by the devil, that all serpent called the devil, and their spirits erring, having erred. Praise God. It is the spirit of error that we just spoke about here in First John chapter 4, verse 6. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth. In the spirit of truth, small spirit, that is someone who's connected to the spirit of God. And the spirit of error is that spirit, again, a spirit of, of a human being that is connected to the devil, that has been deceived by doctrines of demons, by the devil himself. And we know that the working of the Antichrist will be according to Satan. Praise God. Rather, the, the Antichrist will come according to the working of Satan. Praise God. And we're going to read there in a minute. But there's a reason why I, take, I, I took you there. John 10, 27. The word of God declares, Jesus Christ speaking, that my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Praise the Son of the living God. So if you have ears, if you have ears, hear what the Spirit of the living God is saying to you. Praise God. If you have ears, Listen to what the Spirit of the living God is saying to you and I. Praise God. The spirit of error is from doctrines of demons. Praise God. Let us go, uh, if you open your Bibles, um, um, to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And that's the reason why I'm getting here before we continue. 2 Timothy chapter 3. But know this, again, this is speaking of the last days, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud. Listen. Pride is consistently one of the, 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 I would say, the fundamental tenets of the Antichrist, fundamental tenets of the devil himself, because the devil sought to exalt himself above God. He, that's why he brings evil demonic thoughts that try to exalt themselves above God in our hearts, it brings pride, brings disobedience, brings rebelliousness. That's why Adam and Eve exalted themselves above God and they listened to the devil. That's why today we have a lot of sin because of pride, because of the pride of man, but coming from the devil himself, who is the devil, who is a master of lies, the father of lies. Praise the Son of the living God. So he says, for men will be lovers of themselves in these last days, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Again, this is speaking of Children that are disobedient. Today we just had a, a shootout, a shootout by someone. And there's been so many shootouts. We've really had enough. And do you know why? Because of the disobedience, that spirit, that disobedient spirit, that arrogant spirit, that spirit of rebelliousness in our children that we need to pray about. And that the Holy Spirit may deliver this nation and all the nations in the world. And that comes from the devil himself. When someone picks a gun and shoots another, or even a parent that allows a child to hold a gun and, 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 and you know, don't even recognize that there are going to be repercussions, there are going to be possibilities of such shootouts in high schools. When we have laws that are not really uh, uh, exalting God, but are exalting man, and, and that are fearful rather than faithful in God who protects us, then we have an issue. And I'm not going to talk about gun laws and gun control, but I don't believe that any man should die by any man's hands. I don't believe that that is of God. I don't believe in nuclear weapons and people wiping out other nations. I don't believe in denomination, interdenominations. I don't believe in any hatred because I don't believe it is of God. So he says in the last days, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of uh, money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient. There's a reason why I said interdenominations and denominations because I believe those divisionisms are not of God. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see that that is a form of godliness, denying the power of God. If you believe in doctrines of human beings and theologies and things that are contrary to the other, and then you think that if you gather together as denominations that you're one in the spirit of God, then that is a lie. Because you must reconcile the, 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 the truth that is in the word of God amongst yourselves first, then you will understand that which is the perfect will of God. But if you have differences in doctrines, then there is a false spirit amongst the Christian community. And we must understand as born-again believers, whether you're born again, and, and for those that are, have uh, other religions, you must become born again. But we must understand that to be really born again, you must be born of water and spirit. You must accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And he has not called us to follow religious doctrines. He is not for, yes, there is true doctrine, but he has not follow, follow, asked us to follow doctrines of men. Doctrines of men that interpret scripture verses 
and others and then you have people believing in in baptism by immersion and others believing in uh, infant baptism and then that is the difference that separates you that is not under one spirit the spirit of god that is not what jesus christ died that we may have he prayed in john 17 that we may be under the spirit of the living god and being under the spirit of the living god where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty in second Corinthians 3 verse 17 the word of god declares so here he says three and loving and forgiving and we see in the church today even in the church that there is a lot of hatred people the very fact that one faction or a denomination doesn't believe in the other and their factions fighting against the other that just tells you that that is hatred it is not of god and loving and forgiving slanderers without self-control brutal despisers of good traitors headstrong haughty haughty against again this is talking about pride haughtiness is pride lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of god having a form of godliness in other words there are people that are religious have a form of godliness even among people that are outside of a christian religion that have a form of godliness that think believe islam is is it they believe hinduism is it that is a form of godliness by denying the power of god the power of god coming from the holy spirit and nobody receive the gift of the holy spirit unless they come to christ and that is the truth and so let us go back to first john chapter 4 verse 6 it says we are of god he who knows god hears us he who is not of god does not hear us by this we know the spirit small spirit of truth and the spirit of error so the spirit of truth is that that is connected to the holy spirit as a result of having accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And the spirit of error is that spirit that has erred as a result of having been connected to the father of lies, and that is the old serpent called the devil, the dragon, that will bring the spirit of Antichrist. Now I'm going to take you to um, think Second Thessalonians, the book of Second Thessalonians in the interest of time, uh, chapter 2. Let us open our Bibles to Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Praise God. But before we go there, actually, let's open First Peter, First Peter chapter uh, three, verse nineteen to twenty, so that you understand this, the spirits that we're talking about. There, the difference between demonic spirits and there's, there's there are spirits of men, spirits of men and women. Praise God. So there is a difference. You must differentiate what the scripture is talking about here. Praise God. And when he speaks of antichrist, he's speaking about human beings that are against Christ. Human beings whose spirits have been corrupted by the devil, and now they are against Christ. They do not believe in Christ. Atheists. I haven't talked about talked about uh, atheists, but they are atheists who even reject that God exists. Praise God. But for those that believe in Jesus Christ, you recognize that even as Jeremiah, Jeremiah one five proclaims that before this God speaking to Jeremiah, a great prophet of God, before you are formed in your mother's womb. I sent you here on earth. I ordained you a prophet of all nations. So which that goes to tell you, as we discussed earlier, that before we are even formed in our mother's wombs, God has ordained us to do the work that he has called us to do. It is up to us now to recognize what that purpose and that will of God is, if we are willing to accept Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior and submit our hearts under the leadership of the Holy Spirit, and we will have that revelation in the name of Jesus. Praise God. And that is how we get to know who we are in Christ, what we are supposed to do when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. He reveals to us our purpose, even as he revealed it to me. Praise God. First, John, First Peter chapter 3, verse 19 to 20. I think we shared this scripture before. I'm going to start from 17. And he's talking about the spirits or that we are in prison. This is was in a time of newer when the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is he explains that that spirit of God is the same spirit that came upon newer that he preached to the spirits in prison. Now he's talking about spirits of men, not demonic spirits, but the spirits of men that were in prison, spirits that were disobedient and rebellious in the times of Noah. Listen to what it says. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust. Praise God. So he suffered the, uh, for, uh, once for sins, the just for the what? For the unjust. In other words, Jesus Christ was just and he suffered for the unjust. He who was sinless took on our sin that we may be sinless. He who was rich became poor for our sake that we may be rich. Rich kind of richness. He's talking about the gold from heaven. Revelation 3, 18 proclaims to seek gold that has been tested by fire from him that we may be rich. 
white garments that our nakedness may be covered. I saw that we may see in the realm of the spirit. Praise God. So he says, for Christ, in verse 18, also suffered once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the spirit. And this is capital spirit. So Christ himself, a spiritual being in a human body, but born by, actually, he was, the Christ was the very spirit of God. He, he, the spirit of the son of the living God was in Christ. Praise God. He was not born like you and I. His spirit. Praise God, was directly from God, the son of a living God. So that same spirit, Peter explains here, praise God, in verse 19, by whom also he who preached to the spirits, now these are small spirits, praise God, in prison. So by the same spirit of God, the spirit of God that rose Jesus Christ from the dead, praise God, it is that same spirit that he, Christ, praise God, our Father in heaven, the spirit of God, because they are three and one, praise God. They are one, meaning they are three separate persons, but they believe as one, praise God. In other words, none can do anything that is separate from the other. That's how you know the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God points from to, points to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And the Son of the living God pointed to the Father. He says, just as you, 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 you I, I do not say anything that the Father has not told me. I do not do anything that the Father is not doing. He does what the Father does. We who are born again do what the Father has sent us to do. We do what the Father has sent us on account of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. And we are empowered by the Spirit of the living God who he has given to us. Praise God. So he says in verse 19, by whom also he went and preached to the spirits in prison. Now these spirits were human beings, were in prison, disobedient. And here, who formerly were disobedient, he says in verse 20, who formerly were disobedient. When once the divine, and the formerly here is talking about in earlier times, earlier times being the times of Noah, who formerly were disobedient, when once the divine long suffering waited. So the divine long suffering waited in the days of Noah. So, and he says, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight souls, were saved through the water. So only eight souls were saved through the water. And those souls that were saved through the water were the souls of Noah, his wife, three of his um, uh, sons, and three of his wives. And the rest, as we know, were animals. But there are those spirits that were in prison, the spirits that were imprisoned, the spirits of men and women that rejected. For we are spirit of beings in a human body. Even Noah is a spirit of being in a human body. Praise God. And yes, we have a soul, and that soul is connected to the spirit. Once you are born again, your soul is tamed so that your body is not able to sin. We have mind, body, and, and spirit. Praise God. Or body, soul, and spirit. So our souls are saved. If you listen to, um, uh, if you uh, uh, understand that the soul, the soul is the battleground. It is where the enemy plants evil. Once your spirit is born again, you are no longer imprisoned to the curse of a lot of sin and death, to the curse of the devil, to the imprisonment of uh, an enslavement uh, to sin. Because now you have the authority that comes from Christ through his spirit to overcome sin and that sin no longer has dominion over you. Romans 6 verse 10 says, when we come to Christ, we become dead to sin and we become alive in Christ. Praise the son of the living God. So let us go, uh, if you will, to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. 2 Thessalonians um, 2, if you have your Bibles with you, um, please open 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. The book of Second Thessalonians, chapter 2. Hallelujah, somebody. And I'm hoping you're getting the uh, revelation here. This is what Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, uh, verse 1 says. Now, brethren, and this is talking about the coming of the Antichrist. And I want you to listen very carefully because we're living in such times when the Antichrist is about to be revealed. When Jesus Christ uh, was here on earth, he said, when you begin to see earthquakes and pestilences and famines and uh, floods and uh, wars and rumors of wars and, 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 and all these other things that are happening in the world today, as a matter of fact, he said in, 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 in Matthew 24, that as the days of Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah, and we know what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah, there was a lot of rampant sexual immorality, homosexuality. In the days of Noah, there was a lot of killing. We just uh, read about the spirits that were disobedient, the spirits that were in prison and were disobedient. We just read about the disobedience, the love of money, which are in these last days, which we see in these very last days. 
people that are lovers of themselves, selves having a form of godliness, but denying the power of God. These are the days, the last days that we are talking about. And Paul here, in the, in the days, by the way, someone may wonder that, but Paul was there over two, almost 2,000 years ago, at the time, right after the time of Christ. Yes, the Bible declares in 1 Peter chapter 2, praise God, that one day in the heaven, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. So, technically or spiritually, it's only been about two days since Jesus Christ died because it's been over 2,000 years since he died. So, you don't know when he's going to return. He can return any minute. Scripture says that he can re he's going to return like a thief in the night. He will return anytime. You won't be prepared if you have not accepted Jesus Christ. You won't be prepared for, for, the, for the return. But if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are prepared for his return. Praise God. And this is the scripture. It says, now brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him. And, and please understand me. Nobody knows the time or the day, the exact day when Jesus Christ is going to return. I just said it. He's going to return like a thief in the night. But the question is, are you prepared when he returns? Are you ready when he returns? If you are not ready, now is the time for you to prepare. Now is the time for you to be ready. Praise God. To accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And you will be saved. You will have eternal life. Praise God. It says, now brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled. So in fact, Jesus Christ said in Matthew 24 that let us not be anxious when we see these things, when we see the earthquakes and everything, but let us be prayerful. Let us prepare as though he were to return any minute. Let us pray for others, preach the gospel. That is what we need to do as born again. Let us be the salt and light of the world that God has called us to be. And that is what precisely I am doing. And I'm speaking to somebody to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior because it is not too late. If you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you repent of your sins, be born again, your sins are going to be forgiven, forgiven and forgotten, blotted out, and you will be in the Lamb's book of life. Praise God. You will be in the Lamb's book of life. So here it says, now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled either by spirit or, again, it says spirit, here, the small spirit, or by word or by letter. Spirit here in the Bible is referencing the spirit of man. Praise God. Now, the spirits, as we've seen, can error. They can error if they follow the father of lies. The spirits can be spirits of truth. If they follow the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Spirit of God. Praise God. So he says, not to be soon shaken in mind, because we are living in a times when, oh, they were so worried and anxious. Well, things are going awry. We are, we are, uh, the world is coming to an end. And we've seen those times. People are shaking and all that. Do not shake. All you need to do is pray. Second Chronicles 7, 14, the word of God declares, if my people that are called by my name shall bow down on their knees and ask for the forgiveness of their sins, seek my face, God says, he will come down and heal this land. That's why he sent his only begotten son here on earth, that we may be healed. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we are healed. Now, there is all kinds of false prophets that will lie to you, that they are bringing peace. But the peace that comes from God is not as the world gives. Say to the disciples, the peace I give is not as the world, but it comes from heaven. And through Christ, the son of a living God, the prince of peace himself, Jehovah Shalom, the son of a living God who was sent by our Father in heaven to die for forgiveness of our sins. And through his spirit, we receive the peace and liberty that we all need. Praise God. So he says, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter. So this is a human being that is writing. Praise God. It's not demons that are writing. It is a human being, but a human being, a spiritual being in a human body. But some of them teaching false deceptions. They were teaching false uh, uh, false teachings. They were teaching uh, doctrines of demons and, and claiming that, oh, you know what? You need to give up everything. You need to, 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 uh, to, to give up uh, all that you have. You need to be poor. You need to, and that is not true. God has not asked us to be poor. He wants us not to worship money, but to use our money for the benefit of the kingdom of God. Praise God. So they were teaching all manner of false doctrines, forbidding, as we read, people to eat uh, food, but when, when you pray over food, that food is sanctified. Otherwise, think about it for a minute. If you are so, um, uh, if you claim to be born again, and, and, and so you said, I'm not gonna eat any food that is sold in the stores, you don't know who 
grew the food and maybe some atheists who grew the food and maybe a store that is ethnic one of these ethnic stores i like ethnic foods but people have little goods in those ethnic stores you you, you can really testify with me you've gone to those stores and you've seen ethnic foods where there's a buddha there's a hindu whatever god or somewhere whatever they believe in believe it but god is saying that when you pray over that food and you're a believer in the name of jesus because all food has been <laughs> provided by god food it's God who grows, who sends the water, who sends the rain to water the, 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 the seed of the, the apple that you eat. It is not the devil that, that sends the water that, that um, uh, makes the food grow. So if you pray over it and, and cover it in the blood of Jesus, that food can be eaten. And so these people were teaching false doctrines that, oh, that is food offered to idols. They don't go to the stores, don't go to this. I'm, I'm imagining the same thing these days, praise God. But those are the false doctrines at the time. And so here he's saying, not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ was, was, uh, was, had come. So they were giving up on so many things. They were forbidding people to marry, or you ought not to marry. If you marry, you see, if you marry, now you'll be, you'll be in sin. They're even creating marriage as a sin. And now people wanted people to be celibate, forcefully celibate. And that's what we see in the Catholic Church. I'm, I'm, I just threw it out there. Praise God. And why do we have celibacy if you have not been called to be celibate? And this is why you see a lot of homosexuality in the Catholic Church by priests. This is why you see even fathers, Catholic fathers, fathering children are within their church itself. I can't say out of wedlock because they are not wedded. They call themselves celibate, but they have children among sisters they have children among uh, uh otherwise we have those stories in, in uganda and many other places this is the truth and so these are some of the false doctrines that paul was dealing with here and he says in verse 3 let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed now this is a human being the antichrist is be a human being but listen to what he says let no one deceive you by any means. The day of the Lord will not come unless the falling away comes first. What is the falling away? The falling away is when people become lovers of, uh, of, of money, haters of good. We just read that scripture. Praise God. Lovers of self rather than God. Lovers of pleasure rather than God. Having a form of godliness and denying the power of God, which is the spirit of a living God. And so he's saying that unless the falling away comes first. And we are seeing the, seeing the falling away so fast. It's happening so fast. People don't like anything to do with Jesus Christ. And I'm preaching this message, <laughs> but I have to preach it because God has put it on my heart because I know somebody out there is going to be delivered. Praise God. But he says, unless the falling away comes first. And Jesus Christ says, in the last days, the love of many will turn cold. The love of many, meaning the love for Christ, will turn cold. People will be lovers of self rather than lovers of God. So he says, unless the falling away comes first, the man of sin, and the man of sin, the man of sin meaning the lowest one, the Antichrist himself. So it will be a human being, as we just read in First John chapter 4. The Antichrist are already here, but the Antichrist who's coming, this is he who they're talking about. Praise God. He who was warned uh, through Christ, he warned us that once you see the abomination of the desolation, in Matthew 24, praise God, as a matter of fact, let's read Matthew 24. I like to um, uh, quote the truth so that you understand Matthew 24 Jesus Christ spoke of this person when he warned us in Matthew 24 if you have a chance to read Matthew 24 praise God this is who he warned it's in verse uh, Matthew 24 verse 15 therefore when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place and that is in the temple of God and calling himself God just know then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains let him who is on the housetop uh, not go down to take anything out of his house just know but woe to those who are pregnant just know that the return of christ will be very soon praise god he's speaking of the antichrist and here in verse 3 listen, listen what he says let no one deceive you by any means for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition the son of perdition being that lawless one the antichrist who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called god and this was prophesied in the book of daniel praise god he will oppose all that is called god he will exalt himself that is the spirit of pride that we've been consistently seeing in the antichrist and that is what differentiates men and women of god from those that are not of god the spirits of truth small spirits and the spirits of error 
spirits of truth being under the spirit, the big spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit of God, and the spirit of error under the Father of lies, the spirits of truth being under the Father of truth, for those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. What does John 4, 23, 24? It says, time has come when those that worship God to worship him in spirit and truth because he's a God of truth. Praise God. And we must worship him in spirit. And we must be connected to the spirit of God in order for us to be able to worship him in spirit and truth. But look at this. Who opposes? This son of perdition, the Antichrist, will oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God, all that is, and all that is, all that is worshipped, so that he sits as God. Praise God. All that is called God and that is worshipped, so that he sits as God. So in other words, he'll bring hearts of men to worship him, that human being. It will be a human being rather than worship God himself. He will sit in the temple. This is what he says. So that he sits as God in the temple, as capital God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. It is this that Jesus Christ was speaking of, the abomination of the desolation. And once you see this, just know that the trials and tribulations have come. Trials and tribulations have come, that the end has come. Those times will be terrible. But brother, sister, friend, whoever's listening, family, that time should not take you unawares. Because now you know that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God who died for the forgiveness of our sins, and that if you accept him as your personal Lord and Savior, you will be saved. Praise God. You will have the gift of eternal life, which comes through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Listen to verse 5. Do you not remember, this is Paul speaking, um, whoever wrote uh, Thessalonians, inspired by the Holy Spirit, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. So the Antichrist is going to be revealed in his own time. He says in verse 7, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. The mystery of lawlessness, again, it is in line with the scripture that we've been reading, that the Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist, is already at work among men. In other words, that lawlessness, lawlessness, the disobedience, the rebelliousness is already at work. Now, at work in the spirits of men that have been confused, deceived by deceiving spirits, this, this, the uh, demonic uh, doctrines of demons, praise God, and those spirits themselves deceiving others because they are being corrupted by the devil himself, praise God. So separate the spirits of men and the demonic spirits. So these are spirits of men that have been deceived by the devil himself, and now they deceive as they preach, they deceive as they go out, as they prophesy. Those are the false prophets that Jesus Christ uh, talked about, the false apostles. In fact, in Matthew 24, if you go back to Matthew 24, uh, he spoke of them as uh, ravenous wolves in sheep's clothing. Praise God. Ravenous wolves in sheep's clothing. Satan himself masquerading as an angel of light, using these men, working in these men and women, masquerading as an angel of light, yet he is an angel of darkness. So we must watch out, brother, sister. And in these days, you don't follow signs and wonders because signs and wonders can be very deceptive. Not signs and wonders. The false signs and wonders you can tell. Signs and wonders are from God. Creative miracles, those are true, yes. But there are some false signs and wonders that are of the devil, and we must watch out. So he says in verse uh, 7, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. Now, he who restrains here is a capital he, and I like to believe that it is the Holy Spirit of God. It is the Holy Spirit who's holding this word as we have it today. But once the Holy Spirit goes, once the Holy Spirit leaves this place and at the hands of the Antichrist, who will have the number 666 in Revelation chapter 13, read Revelation chapter 3, 13, praise God. That spirit of the Antichrist is going to force people who both rich and poor, um, um, slave and free, is going to force people to take the number 666 either on their forehead or their right hand. Watch out for those times. Watch out. Don't let anybody, if you're still here and you're listening to this message, don't allow 666. Don't allow the number 666 on your forehead or your right hand. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I'm speaking to somebody. He is the only way, the truth and life. John 14, verse 6. Praise God. So he says in 8, and then the lawless one will be revealed. So once and there will be a time when Jesus Christ comes back. He will come back like a thief in the night. Those that believe in Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, praise God, will meet him up in the air. Those that are dead in Christ, who have already died, will meet him in Christ. We will meet him um, uh, in the air. 
They will rise up first and meet him in the air, according to the scriptures. Those that are alive at the time will also then meet him up after the dead in Christ, um, um, rise up and meet him up in the air. When the trumpet sound, when the Son of God returns. And, brother, sister, I am speaking to somebody, and I'm pleading with somebody, please accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. I'm really pleading because the time is running out. May God bless you abundantly if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior because you've made the right choice. Listen to verse, uh, verse 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed. So the lawless one, the Antichrist, will be revealed. Whom the Lord will consume. Jesus Christ will consume him at the second coming. There will be another coming. Praise God. The second coming. He will consume him with the breath of his mouth and destroy uh, with the brightness of his coming. So the lawless one, the spirit of ant the, that Antichrist will be destroyed totally. Please don't take triple six. If you take triple six and accept the devil, the mark of the devil, you will not make it to the kingdom of heaven. But if you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you have eternal life in Christ. Listen to verse 9. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan. So the coming of the Antichrist is according to what the working of who? Of Satan himself. With all power, signs, and lying wonders. So in other words, do not follow the signs and lying wonders. And, 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 and yes, Scripture says in Mark 16, 15 to 17, that these signs shall follow those that believe. Again, the signs and wonders of Christ are different from the signs and lying uh, wonders of the devil. You can tell them. You can tell them. Just like in the times of the law, of, of, of the, the covenant law uh, of Moses, when Moses threw down his uh, stick, okay, his staff that God gave him, and he came into a snake, also the magicians came up with their own little uh, sticks and they threw them down, so they, they performed magic. And yes, there will be false prophets that will come up with those magical things that will deceive many. In Matthew 24, verse, uh, uh, verse 24, says, For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. That's Matthew 24, verse 24. So this scripture ties in with 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 9, that the coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. So do not go after lying signs and wonders. Go after Christ. Seek first the, uh, the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. In other words, seek the things of God. Seek the holiness of Jesus Christ. Seek, accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. These are the things that we are adding to you. Mark 16, 16, 15 to 17, the word of God declares, Praise God. These signs shall follow those that believe. They just got to be an addition that wherever you go, people will be healed supernaturally. You can lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. That is just something that is added unto you. My brother, my sister, friend, family. When Jesus Christ sent the 70 people, 70 elders that he had trained, he sent them out to, to heal the sick. They came back and they were very excited. They were joyous. And Jesus Christ told them, rejoice not that demons tremble at, the, at, at your command. And yes, he has given us the power and authority to trap upon serpents and scorpions. But rejoice not that demons tremble. Yes, there are some people that will be used by God and some that are, that are going to be used by, by demons. But even when you're used of God, just don't rejoice because of the miracles, signs and wonders. Don't forget, he said, rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life that are written in heaven. That is the most important thing. That our names are written in the book of life. Praise God. So he says in verse 10, let us go to, back to first, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they will not receive the love of the truth. Again, he's talking about the truth. And that they may be, uh, that they may be saved. The love of the truth is that Jesus Christ is the only way, the truth, and the life. If you love the truth, accept it. And you will be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they may that, that they should believe the lie, that they uh, that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in our righteousness. My brothers, my sisters, friends, family, that is the message of Christ. And I hope that you have received the message of Christ. And I hope that you are going to become born again. I'm going to pray. By the name of Jesus, I thank you for this message, and I pray that somebody has been delivered. I thank you for the deliverance. I thank you for the word that you've written on the tablets of a heart of somebody. I thank you for that spirit, that spiritual being in a human body, that you have been set free. For the word of God declares, for whom the Son has set free is free indeed. John 8, 36. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set free. It is the truth that sets us free. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for that truth. Thank you for sending the spirit of truth. Thank you for sending, most importantly, your only begotten Son. The only way, the truth, and the life to die for the forgiveness of our sins, that whoever believes in him may not perish, may have, may have eternal life. For the gift 
of righteousness is eternal life through Christ. But the wages of sin is death. We rebuke the spirit of sin and unrighteousness. We rebuke the spirit of anti Christ, the spirit of evil, the spirit of Jezebel. We rebuke any spirit that is not of God, any spirit from the devil that all serve and call the devil, that rebelliousness, that spirit of evil that seeks to derail us from that which is the perfect will of God. We demolish every altar of the devil. We demolish every serpentine spirit by the power and authority given to us in Luke 10, 19, Matthew 18, 18, Matthew 16, 19, you give us the power. My Lord, my God, that whatsoever thing we bind here on earth, we'll be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thing we loosen here on earth, we'll be loosened in heaven. So be it in the mighty name of Jesus. If there's anybody with any kind of sickness, let them be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody say, amen. You notice I say the spirit of Antichrist. I'm not saying the actual person, but I'm talking about the spirit behind the Antichrist. Every demonic spirit behind the Antichrist, any disobedience and rebelliousness, let it be broken right now in the mighty name of Yeshua and Mashiach, the Lord of Lords. May God bless you abundantly. And may the blood of Jesus cover us and the overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, that he not love their lives until death.